So this is what you're going to say. My husband is being crushed by a large piece of concrete. Please come immediately. We rented this crazy looking tool and I get to watch Marty use it. I have never cut a hole in a concrete wall. We're going to cut it right over here in this stem wall so that we can connect the addition to that part of the house. And then we're going to cut another one under the house over there to connect the other addition to the main part of the house. That way we have access through the whole crawl space. And so how heavy is that thing, Jules? I mean, 20, maybe 25. Yes, this is a concrete <laughs> wall saw from Husqvarna. You use water with it, right? Yep, we got to get the water going, plug it in, see if we can't cut a hole. All right, so we're going to come over two feet from the corner and then come over three feet this, that's five feet total and we'll go down to here to this line this is a non load bearing wall we don't even need this wall here now all of the support for the whole roof is on this side and that side so we can go ahead and cut into this and not even worry about it we could take this whole wall out if we wanted to but that'd be way too much work what do you think you got water going through it yeah i think I think it's gonna work. Seems like it's gonna be really messy. Yeah, we'll give it a try, man. I don't know, it's just, I've never done this before, right? I've never used this tool, I've never cut into concrete, but I think one thing that, if you could get anything out of our channel, is to try things that you've never done before. You know, rent the equipment. Try to use it. <laughs> Build a cinder block wall. Even, yeah. if, even if you don't like it. <laughs> even if you don't like it, you know I mean? Just just try things and, and you'll get the hang of it. it. It may not be as pretty as if you had hired a professional, but you'll have the skills when you're done to do it if you need to, you know? What yeah. do you think, Jules? Yeah, I mean, I think that's good advice because you don't know if you like doing something until you give it a try. Yeah. And I get to watch Marty try a lot of things. <laughs> no, I get to try a lot of things as well, but Marty's definitely better at it. Here we go. First cut, Kitty. Are you Look ready? Out. Look out, Walter. Step number two, we take this bar, and we're supposed to fit it in. It doesn't even fit, man. The rental place said that somebody had lost the bar to it, so they had to buy a new one. Although this isn't the appropriate bar, so it doesn't fit in the groove. That's lame. Huh? So anyway, you're supposed to pop this out and then you can go deeper with it. It'll do about two or three inches at a time. Got to figure something out. So while I'm over here, slicing away at the wall, Jules is over here, picking away at the dirt. Dude, you're a mad picker. You're doing good, man. Beating me up. I know, but look, you're almost through the whole root section there. Oh, that's a hard section. Yeah, give it a few whacks. Let's see how it goes. There we go, yeah, dude, that looks so good. I found out if I could break it up with that and then use this feed scooper, it helps me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. After a while, the shovel gets really heavy for me. I'm trying to like dig down here. Right. It's so awkward, but this I can just use as a big scoop. Yeah, that looks <laughs> awesome, dude. Probably carries more than a shovel too. I don't know, but it, then I can sit down like this. <laughs> <laughs> and just scoop away. I'm getting really tired, but I'm hoping that this hole doesn't make me cry. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, she's doing a really good job. If you think she's doing a good job digging these holes, give this video a thumbs up. Be cool to see a billion thumbs up. A billion? A billion. Let's see if we can get a billion thumbs up for Jules. <laughs> Slaving away digging these holes, man. This is our last one. Yeah. This is our seventh, right? Or yep. Sixth? One, two, three, four, five, six. So when you're out here later sitting on the porch swing, you'll be appreciating these holes holding up your porch.
Let's go check on Marty and give him some water. Ooh, oh, it's tiring. How's it going, babe? Well, I'm getting the hang of it. This one right here goes all the way through. And the second pass right here, you can kind of see right there maybe. That's how deep it is. So we're gonna do the, the next pass on this one. It takes about three passes, it seems like, to get all the way through. Really? So okay. far. After you get this one done, should it just fall off? It should, hopefully. There might be a bolt. It. There might be a bolt holding it into the mud cell. But you're cutting <laughs> through when you rebar. Yeah. There. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> So you go through, slice it like that, take this out, then you can go, it'll go in further and you can keep doing it. It takes about three cuts to get all the way through. And I found if you sit down, it's a lot easier. It's time, huh? Time. This is all coming down, so I'm just breaking it because it seems easier than going and getting the saw and cutting it. <laughs> All right, so we got a bolt right here and a piece of rebar right here that comes up into here because we didn't know where we were going to connect the house ground to. So we put, we have actually three ground rods coming up. Eufer grounds, they're called. So we're going to cut it here. Then I'll stand out of the way. We'll cut this one and hopefully it'll fall inward. We're just going to leave it in there to be like a flat little step, hopefully. <sighs> That's my goal. Let's see. Bolts cut. Now for the rebar. Please fall inward. That's what I want. Fall inward. Is there any way we could just like push against it so that there's a pressure on it? I would hate, I would hate to have a fall on anybody. Or like, you know, like put something down there? I don't know, dude. Okay. But I think it's best if we just stay out of its way because this thing's probably hundreds of pounds. Okay. It's gotta be, it's huge. All right, we're through and it wants to go that way. Yeah? Let's just see if we can push it. I don't think. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, don't get, don't get squished. Okay. Oh, it's in, man. It's in like land. And look at that, it's a nice little step. It's a nice little flat landing right there. Wow, you, there you are. See that, man? Nice flat landing. Yeah. It'll work, huh? That's awesome. There's no problem leaving it right there. No problem. All right, so we can see here when I cut it, I cut it at an angle. I didn't cut it flat. I don't think that's a problem. This looks good. Two pieces of rebar we went through right there. Two pieces of rebar right here. Two right here. Uh, I don't see anything yeah, over there. Third up. Oh yeah, right there. Yep. yep. And then uh, that's what it, this is what it looks like in our crawl space, man. It's mm -hmm. clean and dry. No bugs. No bugs. We're gonna have to put like a, a piece of wood or something over this temporarily to keep the chickens out. Oh yeah, they will. Otherwise, they're gonna be in there pooing all over the place. Yeah, just gotta get the floor on, ASAP. It's true. All right, check this out right here. I remember I told you that our, our farms bulged when we first poured this thing. This was the first wall we poured. Look at that, man. Look at that. It's so much wider down here. It's like, okay, here we go. You can see that? Bring it up to here. My fingers go past it, down to here. Nope. All right, so we got one done. We got another one that we've got to cut out just like this one. Way over there on the other side of the house. And that way we can get airflow, we can get duct work or plumbing or whatever we need. We can get through here, no problems. But this one took almost four hours to cut out. Oh, I had to move over a bit because I was cutting down and I ran right into a vertical rebar. And so man, it was sparked in and just like, when it's trying to go through the rebar, it sparks a lot, but it just wouldn't stop. It's taken forever. So I moved over, cut it again. All right, so we got to bust out the second cut on this last side. And then, uh, then it's one more cut, but there's no bolts or anything holding this one up there. So I just want to be careful that I don't pinch the saw in there and that it doesn't fall on me once it breaks loose. So Jules is here so she can call 911 real fast. I have no cell service. Well, you have to just do your best. <laughs> This 
this is what you're going to say. My husband is being crushed by a large piece of concrete. Please come immediately. Okay, got to, it. To our address. All right. I'm being helped by a little tiny bit. Really? Yeah, like that much. Here, show up. All right, we got it clean, cleared all the way down to right. That's just a little tiny bit right there. And then all of that is the free. And all that's free. Just that little bit right there is holding it. We're going to continue on. The crowbar moved. Yeah, it did. Definitely went down over there. Yeah, it did. Okay. Is it free all along the top? Free. All right, I'm going to try to push it. What's that water? It's raining. No. Yeah. Really? Did you cover the concrete? Yeah, but I didn't get it in time. Yep. Huh. So you think it got soaked? It got wet. I don't think soaked, but wet, yeah. Okay. Oh, stuck, in. All right, so the mud, the OSB comes down a little bit below the mud sail, so it's hitting it here, so I can't push it that way, so we're going to push it this way. Oh, okay. Maybe. We're going to try. Yeah. See how it's hitting right up there? Yep, I do. It's weird that it would just hold it just that much, so. Mm -hmm. Just barely. All right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, come on now. Here it comes. Here it goes. Wow. That would seriously smash a foot. Oh, hey, look at that. We can see all the way through now. That's <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Good job, babe. That was a hard job. That was, man. A lot harder than I thought it would be. I thought, we're going to go through it real quick. Hours and hours yeah, and hours. I think we're at like six, seven hours now, huh? Yeah, probably seven. Seven hours mm -hmm. to cut both of these. Yeah. And I'm a filthy mess. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. We got to get that thing back to the rental. I know. I know. We're, we're going to be over time. Yeah, man. That's so cool. Came out good, man. Came out real good. I'm so pleased with our work, Jaws. Good job. It's really awesome. Another morning, guys, here on the homestead. We got those things cut out yesterday, which was, uh, oh, that was a lot of work. It was actually two days ago, because Sunday we went to church. And if you're ever in the area, you're always welcome to come to church with us. Bible study or regular worship service. There's a link down in the description below. You can check that out. But look at what Seth's doing. Dude, you're digging a big hole right in the root cellar. Yep. What you doing that for? For a sump pump. A sump pump. It's going to go in this bucket. We're going to use this bucket in that hole. Put a sump pump in there so that if water gets in there or the water table rises, right? Like, I'm not expecting it to. I'm hoping this is just overkill for precautions. But it's good to have it there, right? It's easier to put it in now than later. So, Seller, thanks for digging that awesome hole. We're gonna put gravel all in here so that the water can flow through the gravel and into that hole. That's the idea anyway. What do you think, think it'll work? Hopefully. We're gonna pour that slab in this video, okay? So just hold tight, we're gonna get there, but that'll be tomorrow. And Jules, she's over here doing something. I'm just running around with the camera, guys, that's it. What are you doing? Oh, you're looking for screws. Yeah, I'm looking for screws that we can use for our forms. And then also Capcom screws. All right. I found them. <laughs> cool. It's like a jungle in here, man. It's so oh, humid, it huh? It is. It's so hot so and humid. humid. This should be, this would make a really good greenhouse. Yeah. Because, like, we already got the frame and everything. If we just got the greenhouse plastic to go on it, the clear yeah. stuff. It would be a good spot, but. Whew. Oh, I feel so much better up here. Yeah. Get Jules in her shorts and. <laughs> work boots i know i'm really goofy looking right now all right so we are making up some forms we said we were going to do it in the last video it just didn't work out we didn't get it done man we we're running out of time so these are already measured we need to cut them and then put them together cool and then attach them all right let's do it honey we got a moon that's falling a dance floor made of glass blue eyes make me warm make this evening last put on an old song Put on that new dress Tomorrow's coming But it ain't here yet We got stars outside Just
we often talk about our boneyard. This is what we mean. We have all these scraps laying around from different projects. So we just come grab from it. We've got our bulldog down there and we're gonna be using our little solar generator to uh, run it. Just because they're easy to use, man. They're easy and uh, portable. The important thing is though, you remember to charge them. There we go. 93%. All right. Stars outside, and it feels just right. I got this feeling rising through the ceiling. Watcher's coming to check it out. Hey, Watcher. Check your job. They do a good job. What do you think, Watts? How do you do? Uh -huh. Don't go in there. Yeah. <laughs> I think he thinks it looks good. What do you think, huh? He loves it. All right, good job. We did it, dude. So we got our forms up now, tack conned into the wall there. And these guys are mixing up the concrete, but we did get caught off guard with some rain. And so what happened to the bags there? We got some hard chunks on the top. Yep. So we're just digging out them hard chunks. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, like that. Man, that's yep. not gonna fit down in that hole. It was only a sprinkle too, so. That's a good lesson. Make yeah. sure that your concrete's covered. Covered, even if you don't think it's gonna be raining, raining on you. So I mean, it wasn't even supposed to rain, and we're just like we're yeah. cutting out the holes, right? We're cutting out those holes the other day. I had earplugs in. Yep. What did you know? And when I saw it, actually, it hadn't even started dripping from the roof yet. Yeah. So it was very, very little rain. <laughs> but it was enough to get the top layer of those bags hard. Yeah. This cement mixer is so quiet, man. Listen to it. It's way cool. All right, guys, one eye is no more. This replaces one eye. I know it's kind of loud. We got a Yanmar 359. It's a 59 horse tractor, four wheel drive. And we got the dedicated third function installed. Let me show you how that works. Come here. This right here is the valve for the third function. Right up here is the toggle switch for it. So we had the snow plow on there so we could test it out to make sure that that third function actually worked. It was an add-on to the tractor, didn't come stock from the factory that way. Got a cool little cover up here. Later on, I'll tell you why I did not get a cab. But let's go put the bucket on here so we can get some gravel in that hole. Think it's gonna reach? I don't know, we'll find out. Hopefully it'll reach over there and we don't have to get too close to that wall. It's gonna be a bummer for that wall to collapse and have to crash into that dim wall. That'd be sad. I think that ends a spotter up there. Yep. He's coming! Hi! <laughs> I'm <be> sad! <laughs> Dude, I'm not crying wolf. Go at go get him boy. <laughs> All right, so this is the bucket for the um, sump pump. We're gonna put it in here, and uh, it's gonna be gravel all around it. We got holes drilled in it so that the water can get in there if it needs to. And then, uh, so right now we want it, we're gonna pour about a three inch slab. So we want this bucket about three inches above here. So that is really close, really close.
So how are you feeling about the pour this morning? Pretty good. Pretty good. I think, I mean, I think we're going to get the concrete everywhere it needs to go. The smoothness of the floor, it's going to be what it is. But it is just the root cellar. So as long as it's relatively level, it should be fine. Seth's over here moving all this wood out of the way so that the concrete truck can come right through here. Thank you, Sether. Jules and I got all of the plastic down inside the root cellar, and that's just to help prevent water from coming up through the concrete into the into the root cellar. I know a root cellar is supposed to have a really high humidity, but at the same time, this is the underside of our house, and so we want to try to keep that humidity um, a little bit lower than maybe it ought to be. We're going to try this, put this plastic down. We've got the sump hole over there we can put the sump pump in and about six inches of gravel down there for the water to flow through hopefully it's all going to work out we'll see it's just jules seth and i today pouring this concrete and pouring the footers for the uh for the porch i think we'll get it done what do you think jules yeah i think we're gonna do it it's a nice day too the truck nice should day. be here really soon yeah listen to him purr what's you have a loud <laughs> He has such a loud fire buddy. I know he does. It's yeah. so cool. It's like a motor. All right, so this is my plan. The water, when it hits this wall right, and it hits the plastic behind it, it's going to want to come down to the bottom because of gravity. And it's going to want to come through the bottom of the wall. And it will probably come through this seam right down here at the bottom of the wall. But it's going to come down here and it's going to go underneath the plastic into the gravel down here and eventually make it over to the sump pump, which is right over there. And so we've got it all the way up just a little bit. The concrete will go up past that. And then uh, anyway, I think that's how it's gonna work. The truck is here, you guys. So exciting. What do you think, Seth? You ready for this? Ready. It's a pretty easy job, huh? Sure. <laughs> I like your boots. Thanks. Styling, man. Yeah. Marty's got a matching pair over there. Huh? You got a matching pair of boots? Yeah. Seth. Getting ready to pour. He says it shouldn't be a problem. I heard him say it was a piece of cake. Piece of cake. Dreaming, I've been busy dreaming, climbing over mountains, chasing every feeling. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Talking, getting tired of talking, feeling like I'm flying high up in the sky. Wow, you guys, that's looking great. Yeah. It looks nice and smooth. Else. Yeah. What's your um, departure plan? <laughs> We're gonna come out over this corner. Okay. And then smooth it out with like a two by four and a one two by four. Okay. Try looking cool. Out. We got two holes filled, four more to go, and Marty and Seth are out there smoothing down the concrete. It looks really good. So I painted myself into a corner. <laughs> It'll be alright. I didn't get out. Oh. Yeah, that works really well. Nice and smooth, man. Now, what'd you say? Just gotta keep the kitties off of it? <laughs> the ideal. I think you have to lock them up for that. Be, uh... They're everywhere. Yeah, I bet they'll get in it. Yeah, probably. Uh, let's see. Hopefully not, though. Little kitty prints aren't bad. <sighs> it's true. I gotta rinse some stuff off. All right. All right, so Seth and I got this pretty smooth the first time just going through it. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some swirl marks in it from us because right, it was still really wet when we just, you know, first time pour it, smooth it out, and then I'm going to, I got these guys. We got two of these guys to distribute my weight. I'm going to try to go down in there 
and use these to move around in there and then try to smooth it out a little bit better. It's been setting now for about mm, 45 minutes or so. We'll go down and test it and see if we can't get rid of those swirl marks or not. If not, it doesn't really matter, but I want to see if I can do it. It'd be fun. Few moments later. All right, final result. There's still some lines in it, but I think it's pretty good. We're gonna go ahead. We did some backfilling already yesterday. Backfilled along here about halfway up. I'm gonna go ahead and start backfilling in here as well. Go about mm, halfway up-ish. Let that pack down for a little while, and then we'll come back in and backfill some more. Got to get some of that wood out of there. You don't want to leave wood down in there. It's uh, it's an invitation for termites. But I'll tell you guys, we have not seen one termite on this property. You know, there's been a lot of dead trees, a lot of wood that's been left on the ground for like a year. Flip it over, not one single termite. So I'm glad about that. The next day. Whew, another day here on the homestead. Windy day today. Don't know why it's so windy, but it is today. We're doing some backfilling. Backfilling all along here and here. Getting our dirt from our big piles over there. Bringing it over and getting her done. Then mud sills, floor joists, little wall we gotta build in there. All of that's happening in this video. We might even have the floor done in this video. We'll see. Got it all backfilled, all raked out nice and smooth. The top of the mud sills are ground down and we're just checking to make sure that they're square and they're right. This is the last time, right? We can fix some stuff. We can adjust the mud sill a little bit if we need to. And so this wall is perfect. That wall is nearly perfect. We're gonna chalk line from here, 16 feet out, straight down. You can see this wall is not exactly straight. We're going to go ahead and just check it for square just for fun. See how close we are to square. Should be pretty close. That's my guess anyway. So we'll come down, what, six feet? Come down eight feet. Then we measure in between the two and it should be ten feet. Will you hold it on the one foot mark, Seth? Yeah. You there? Yep. We are a cord. Oop. Wait, are you there? So we're an eighth off. I think I'll take it. Sometimes when these anchor bolts are in there and you're doing the concrete, they end up getting a little crooked. Not the fear. Just take your rebar bender bar, slide it over the bolt, and they bend super easy. Super easy. Hi, kitty. Look out, dude. I can't see with you there. Now they're straight. All right, so we just chalk lined up here above the floor joist. We're gonna go ahead and just cut this OSB off. And I know you're wondering, when we're gonna take this wall down? We'll take the wall down after we get the trusses on, probably the roof on as well. And then we'll take down this wall piece by piece and psh, take it down. But um, we gotta cut this so we can put a rim joist or our, a floor joist we're gonna nail right up to this rim joist here. So we can put our flooring up and it'll match the flooring on the other side. I got my Wow, destructor, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Was that the last piece? We just have some nails now. Yeah, we got some nails we gotta get out. But yep. Awesome. Yeah, you can see into our home. <laughs> into our insulation anyway. We got the fun pink stuff put down underneath the mud cell. Cause that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Line it up on the outside, okay? We're setting the mud sill, and to do that, we set it on top of the bolts. 
line it up so that it's flush with the outside because our outsides are correct. Then we hit it with a hammer and it puts a mark so that we can then drill it out. Whew. Another morning <clears throat> here on the homestead, guys. Jules is busy running around hey. getting things together. And uh, it is about 65 degrees out this morning. You might hear some thunder in the background. I've been having a lot of thunder this morning so far. But we got the mud seal down all the way around here. And now we're going to be working on building this short wall that's going to support the floor joists going across. Whew. We're ready. Checking our mud sill here to see if it's level. And you can see it's a little bit off. So we didn't grind this down at all. Hopefully there's just some bumps that it's sitting on. So we'll go ahead, take the mud sill off real quick, run a quick grind down it and uh, knock any of those high spots down. So hopefully this will be more level. Let's check this way. Ooh, our wall is pretty level. It's not perfect though. Laying out for our studs for our little short wall here. I'm not sure. What's the name of this wall right here? I don't even know. For our root cellar. Yeah, for our root cellar. So uh, go ahead and we're marking where we're gonna put the studs on here so that the studs will line up with the floor joists going across. We're doing floor joists two by tens every 16 inches, which is what we did in here as well. got our floor joists here kind of setting out just cutting them to length right here and uh, these are actually the forms that we use for the stem walls on this side and right over here as well so we're we're reusing recycling upcycling whatever you want to say our forms into floor joists <laughs> So, guys, it's um, I can't come towards you. It's it's not. There's not as much space as I thought there was. So this is the the root cellar. Obviously, you see in this building here now for a few videos. But the stairs are going to come down right here into the root cellar, just like this. And so this is going to be one of the floor joists for this side. Then there'll be the one over here, and there'll be a box right in the middle. So Seth's working on cutting out the boards that go this way for the opening for the root cellar. And then uh, we'll get those up there. They'll connect to the ends of these floor joists here. We're gonna double them up, double floor joists here, double floor joists here to frame in the opening. What do you think? Think it'll work? I think it's coming out good. It's coming out good. This is the complicated side. We'll be, we'll be putting the floor on tomorrow. That'll be exciting. Yeah, for sure. We'll finish this up. We'll go get the floor in. And we're gonna be cranking this bad boy out. Walls are next. What's your next? Man. <laughs> it's coming up. <laughs> All right, check it out. This right here is the opening. Stairs will go down this way into the root cellar. Oh man, the floor joists are coming out really good, except we're short. One rim joist two rim joists, and one floor joist. We're short three boards. Huh. It's already getting late in the day, it's starting to rain. And so in the next video, we'll finish up these floor joists, we'll lay the floor and start framing the walls. We're gonna have to end it here, guys. If you wanna go all the way back to the beginning to when we were living in tents, we've got this video right up here. You can go ahead and click 
or you can watch this video right down here. We hope you guys have a really great day and keep smiling.